Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Kim Barra Show. I am your host, Kim Barra, and on today's episode, we have Mr. Mike Konix. Now, if you're someone who's ever thought, oh, I know that I am good at doing something, I know that I can actually go out there and make a difference, but I'm not sure how to tap into what my superpower might be, this is an episode for you. Or maybe you're just, you know what your superpower is and you're just not putting yourself out there. You have to tune into this episode. We break all that down and more with Mr. Mike Koenigs and a few amazing real life examples too. And of course, if you need help amplifying your superpower, you need help getting that message out there faster, head over to marketingmogul.com.au where we have your back and can help you hit all of those goals you set for yourself. But without further ado, let's jump into the show. Mike, thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate you making the time. It's absolutely my pleasure. Great to have you here. Now, I always like to start the podcast off with the same question every time, which is if I met you and we're at a party and I said, Mike, what is it that you actually do? What's your go-to answer? Well, my short answer is I am a superpower accelerator, which is I get to know who you are usually what your known or your unknown superpowers are. And then I will help you build a platform that will help you build an audience and monetize it using your greatest skills and all the resources around you. And I will push you to charge two to 10 times more for whatever it is you do and also support a high quality lifestyle while you do that thing. I love that. I'm sure you'd get a lot of bites at, uh, at parties on that. They'd be like, oh, cool. Sounds good to me. I'm in. Now, I'd love to know for yourself, how did you unlock? Because obviously now you're out there helping people with this. How did you unlock your superpower? What was kind of that journey like for yourself? Well, I didn't know this. It took me a long time to figure this out. But what I've always been good at is pattern recognition. So and also hacking systems. I wasn't good at school. I wasn't popular necessarily. But I and I grew up without a lot of resources or money and mentors. I came from a good family in a very small town in Minnesota in the United States. And I taught myself how to program when I was about 14 years old. And my goal was to escape this little town by writing video games, which eventually I did. And then from there, I also always worked really hard. So I started working the day I turned 16. I love entrepreneurship and business, and I also love entertainment and marketing. And again, I didn't know what any of this stuff was growing up. I just knew I loved stuff like infomercials. I loved reading copy and I loved watching salespeople sell. And so I fell in love with the process of selling. And then over time, I was always helpful and useful to other people. So I grew up, my dad was a musician, so I learned how to play accompaniment musical instruments. Um, because I learned how to code and start writing video games. I also got involved in audio and video and film production. And I eventually I met a couple of filmmakers and I was super useful to them because they wanted to turn their movies into video games. And because I knew how to hack technology, I, I learned how to basically disassemble software. I learned how to remove copy protection back when that was a thing. And I, I eventually learned how to hack the internet. So I figured out how search engine optimization work and eventually wrote software that would do SEO. I learned how to hack mobile text marketing before there was there were platforms for doing that. And I, that turned into a company. So every time I always figured, how do you get attention? How do you build an audience? How do you monetize it? And I always built systems and either taught people how to turn themselves into systems or I wrote software to do that. And I think if anyone's probably been around the traps of the internet for a while, they probably would recognize your name from different different things and products and whatnot. Because uh, I know I definitely did. I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I've given you money countless times uh, for different bits and pieces of stuff <laughs> over, over, over the years. Thank you for that. <laughs> my pleasure. My pleasure. So after going through all of that, and obviously, as you mentioned, like unpacking and, and figuring out those codes, when you go, when you then started rolling out what you're doing now with the Superpower Accelerator and helping people unpack that. What's the first thing that you look for when you're like, okay, this person has the potential for me to unpack this for them to help them achieve those things, charge that extra money, um, achieve the got extra goals that they want to do and have a great lifestyle. What are the, some of the things when you first start working with someone and you're like, cool, this is, you know, this is how I start to weigh up what would be like a category of their superpower. 
Sure. Well, I think there's a whole bunch of variables here, but but some of the key things that I look for are, first of all, do you have past success? So in other words, have you helped someone experience some kind of a transformation? So I can give you a real life example. And if you'd like, I'll actually deconstruct someone I worked with and show you how I brought them from zero, literally no platform, no visibility, no anything to a million dollars in revenue in eight months. Do you want me to do that? Yes, please. Okay. So I met a guy, his name is Justin. Uh, I was on a trip to Fiji, not probably not that far away from you. And we got to know each other and we're just hanging out and it was a business mastermind kind of a thing. And eventually we got to the, so what do you do? And I went first and I'm like, well, tell me about this. And he says, well, I'm a cash flow investor. And I'm like, well, that's, that's okay. What does that mean? He says, well, I've had a job most of my life and I used to work for Cutco. I was a sales manager and my wife was a uh, school teacher. And he said, my busy time was during the summer and her off time was the summer, which didn't work well. So my goal initially was I wanted to invest and generate enough passive income so my wife could quit her job. About $60,000 to do that. Wasn't, you know, wasn't a lot. And he started investing in some basic real estate. Got to the point where she quit her job, enough passive income, and they also had a, a daughter. So that problem was solved. And he thought, well, I'm going to do it for myself. And at the time, he was earning about $150,000. And over time, he was a good saver. So he, he had less than a million dollars worth of net worth. But he started investing, investing, and he got to the point where he got to quit his job because he had enough consistent passive income coming in from a couple of different investments. And he said, then I did it some more. And I reached a point where I generated about $10 million in net worth in 21 months. And I'm like, really? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, um, okay. And then what happened? He told me a little bit more and he started generating, he got close to his next 20 next 10 million. Okay. Over the next four years. And I'm like, is this a system? And he goes, eh, not really. I did it. He kind of explained a little bit about how he did what he did. And I said, have you ever written a book or thought about it? He goes, yeah, I'd love to, but I haven't. And I looked him up online really fast. This guy had no plat, no platform at all, meaning no website, no social media, nothing, no followers. And he says, so what do you do? And I go, well, I take guys like you and I create platforms that you can monetize and I make them really successful, really visible so they can amplify their wealth and also impact a lot of people. And he goes, well, tell me more. And I said, well, here's my vision for you. I said, first of all, I think you have a very unique skill and you're clearly like an unconscious competent. You know that you're good at stuff, but you don't even know how you do it. And I said, I will deconstruct how you think and craft a book. And then I will get you a bunch of visibility and build a platform, help you create a product, but also teach what you do to other people or for other people. He said, great. So we got together and over a couple days, I call these vision days is where we sit down and we do the deconstruction and we go through a process. And the, at the end of the day, in two days, we came up with a new brand idea that I call a category of one, meaning no one else is quite like that. And we registered and trademarked Lifestyle Investor. And then we outlined a book, which is right here called The Lifestyle Investor. I've got that on you my shelf. It? Yeah, yeah, I've oh, got okay, it on my great. shelf. I literally just bought it the other week. <laughs> so Justin's a badass, okay? I'll just yeah. tell you that. And I, I said, what would you charge someone if you taught them what you know? And he goes, do you think $15,000 would be too much? And I go, Dude, that's ridiculous. I go, you present what you do to the right person. They'll pay you a lot more. And I said, we're going to create a $250,000 offer to work with you personally. And then we're going to create a mastermind where you will help people find deals and learn how to negotiate like you do. And once you get a bunch of people together, then you're going to have buying power as a group, which is going to enable you to attract and find even better deals and negotiate. And he says, I'm in. So the bottom line is we wrote his book, got him a publisher. This book sold enough copies in the first two weeks to make him a Wall Street Journal bestseller, a USA Today bestseller, and of course, an Amazon bestseller. And then he came out with the audiobook, a product, the $50,000 mastermind. And I knew someone who really needed his help. And I introduced him to his first $250,000 client. And then he used the same messaging strategy. So I taught him exactly what to say and how to enroll someone. 
And as a result, that uh, he got his a second client for $250,000 the same week um, from a group he was already in. So if you fast forward eight months later, bestseller, he's got a podcast, he's interviewing people, he's on tons of podcasts, and he's really developed his charismatic character, which is all him. It's all real and realistic. But a lot of people just don't know until they've been media trained, what to say, how to say it, how to storytell. And as I say, deliver the transformation, not a transaction. And so now he's got this great business. Um, he could easily do three to $5 million a year with very few moving parts, still maintaining a high quality of life, relationship with his wife and his daughter, never missing the best times, but also impacting a lot of people who can benefit from how he thinks about money. And he's helped me tremendously, too, because in the process of me getting to learn how he thinks and his process and systemizing it with him, I invest completely differently. And I've, I'm constantly introducing him to new opportunities as he is to me. So I believe in also creating ecosystems. I like to find people who I feel absolutely comfortable referring them and them me and building a, a mini economy. And that's what I mean when I say ecosystem. I think that's amazing. And a lot of people I find have have those assets there where they're sitting there and they just either they don't know that they can unpack it and create things like that or they're just not sure. Now, one that I come across quite often is probably slightly the inverse of Justin, for example, where people have the platforms, they have the reach, they have the audience and they have the knowledge, but they seem to, for whatever reason, kind of, I don't want to say shy, but a little bit or maybe even a little bit scared to pull the trigger and put themselves out there. Do you come across that very often? And what's your general approach when you're working with people like that? Yeah. So I'll give you another case study. So I'll give you two because, uh, again, everyone's a little bit different, but we're all the same. So I just had someone here this last weekend that we did a vision day with. And this guy is a financial advisor. And I always say the problem with wealth management financial advice is you're selling moldy white toast. It is a boring product no one's interested in. And you don't wake up and, and go, I want to buy some insurance, for example, or fill in the blanks there. Um, those kind of products are sold, not bought. And the way I break through that mindset of, I'm not really sure if I want to be out there or whatever is blocking them, I, I guide them through a little process to get them to realize that if they become an authority and an expert in a category of one, and also let go of the attachment because it's always a trauma that's preventing them from stepping out. They'll say, well, I'm an introvert or I may fill in the blanks here. What they're really, they're scared and they don't understand and they step in. I call them how pies, which is they worry about the how instead of the who do I know who can connect me and a better story to right fit people. And then I ask them simple questions like, who would they love to refer business to? What kind of characteristics? What would they need to know? And ultimately, we, we find the thing that's missing, which I call it the value gap. And that simply is your own self-perception of your worth is lower than the outside world's once they hear about how amazing you are. And for whatever reason, there doesn't exist a great story about the transformations you're capable of delivering. And so what we do is we compose or create stories by deconstructing some of the most successful people you've worked with and crafting a movie starring your prospect or your ideal customer with you as their guide. So as I like to say, it's the Joseph Campbell hero's journey with you as their Yoda. And you're going to lead them to the promised land. And it's really easy for the human brain to relate to that. And deep inside, we are wired to react and respond to story. And it's easy for us to see ourselves as a hero because we do it all the time. We think of ourselves as somehow accomplishing whatever our dream come true is. And the way to activate that is just by asking great questions and helping someone step into this little journey and you guide them with some words and some stories um, and, and allow them to see a bigger, better future for themselves. 
I think one of the things you said there is so important, which I think can sometimes hold people back, is that they think that they are going to become and have to be the superhero when in fact, as you mentioned, it's like, you've got to be the guy. Like I remember we did like a lot of my team, like uh, the, uh, the Marvel movies and I, I quizzed them and I was like, cool. What of all the Marvel characters that exist? I was like, who are we in our clients journey, businesses, etc.? And you know, there's like the people like Thor, Captain Mar like all these different things. And I was like, no, we need to be, and I have a little thing here. I was like, we need to be like director fury. Like that's on my desk. That's I right. Just sitting there. I was like, where, where the guides helping them to achieve their goals. They're the heroes. And I think for some people, when it comes to them actually putting themselves out there, they're like, Oh, I, I do I have to perceive myself to be the hero? And it's like, you're the guide. So I think that takes a little bit of the pressure off people when they start to understand, as you just mentioned there. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll tell you what I, what I wind up doing with, all of them at some point in time is, so we go through a process. I, I call it the 4M. So it's market model message media. So who's your market, the ideal audience? It's gotta be an audience with money that you genuinely love and wanna help. The model, which is how are you gonna get paid? That's your offer. The message, which is what's the transformational story starring them that they need to hear for them to raise their hands in the shortest period of time and say, I'm in, when do we begin? And then the media is, how do you reach them? How do you connect with them? Now, so, you know, with Justin, for example, yeah, there's the book, but the very first thing we did, in his case, on the second day, so we crafted this new identity. We crafted and knew who the target audience was. We could describe them by name and describe all their features. So that enabled us to tell a story starring that person, right? It's And, and most of his transformations were done with himself. He had maybe advised or consulted some people before, but I couldn't make it about someone else because he hadn't had a uh, real paying clients up to that point. However, he had a great journey of transformation himself. And I got hooked the first time I talked to him, like it was just like five minutes. I'm like, I want what you got. I want this passive income and I want to know how you think because his unique ability was being able to negotiate extraordinary terms up front. So he was way ahead of this average investor. You know, just because you get a term sheet doesn't mean that's the deal. You can negotiate all sorts of opportunities beyond. I'm like, okay, great. And then the media. So what we did, and I'll actually show you my screen uh, really quickly here because it will illustrate. I don't know if you can give me sharing capability, but I'll bring it up for a moment. Okay, there we go. So this is a little interview that I did. I write for Entrepreneur in Forbes magazine. And what we did is I said, Justin Donald is the investment world's new Warren Buffett. Okay, that's a title he'd have for the rest of his life. And then I interviewed him. So he was basically in a new identity. So think of it as your alter ego and did this nice interview branded with Entrepreneur Magazine. Okay, he'd have this for the rest of his life. There he is. And literally 20 minutes before he went on camera, we created the 10 Commandments of Lifestyle Investing, which became the hook for his book. And we just made him up. And I interviewed him about each one. So lifestyle first, reduce risk, invisible deals. So here are all the points. And then at the time, he didn't have a website. We threw together a one-page website. Now he's got a fully branded site, which includes his course and his book. But now you can see Justin Donald's The Investment World's New Warren Buffett, according to Entrepreneur. He has that title for the rest of his life. That is a unique category of one. We trademark lifestyle investor and lifestyle investing. The article got syndicated in multiple places. Now he's got credibility. And there's his book, which, by the way, is the 10 Commandments of Cash Flow Investing for Passive Income and Financial Freedom. Okay. And then he's done his podcast. I got him to go out and capture a ton of testimonials. And then, of course, you know, the podcast is how he does outreach now and connects with people. It's a great sales page on his mastermind. I mean, I just sat down and I took one of my masterminds and we rebranded and renamed everything. Um, there it is, 50 grand, right? And then if you go to coaching, there's this lifestyle investor coaching, private coaching. Same basic information, but you know, what are all the things that he's going to do with you? There it is, starting at $250,000. Step one, fill in the blanks. So he takes you on the journey, join the wait list. But now that he's out there, he's getting amazing testimonials from people he's working with, advising. 
and he's advising people with funds. So what he's able to do now that he's got the platform dramatically multiplies his perceived value. And, you know, he reached out to me last week and he said, I have a problem. I have so many inquiries right now. I got 1,200 incoming emails that I haven't been able to respond to. And he had to hire four people just to, to manage all this cord. And he's like, I'm afraid I'm going to start giving up my qual my lifestyle because of this. And I said, I, I told you up front, I said, because he's a, he's a guy who just goes for it. He does the work. He's extremely coachable. And he did everything. And I'm like, slow down here, man. You're going to be amazed at how many opportunities are going to just fly out of every corner. And we don't have to do this all at once. But he's not a guy who takes no for an answer. He doesn't slow down. And now he's, he's overwhelmed with opportunity, which is a high quality problem to have, right? And the good news is he's already solving it. But when you've got a platform and a unique category of one and some great stories, People just resonate with it, and and that really is is the secret. So, again, I don't know if I directly answered your question, but everyone's a little different. And and in some cases, we're working with a, a gentleman right now with a business where he his company has raised thirty five billion dollars, billion with a B, for of uh, companies that sell financial instruments like. REITs or mutual funds, that kind of a thing. And it's another money example. Go figure. We do a, we've do we got a whole bunch of other ones. But in that particular case, his business model has trouble scaling because there's only so many big deals that they can do. And it takes years sometimes to make them go through. So what we're doing right now is we're taking all of his intellectual property and creating a super high level training course that's specialized with an audience that's selling products that cost hundreds of millions of dollars. And that's a genuine recurring revenue stream. So sometimes you got to tilt a business 37 degrees. You got to shake it upside down, let the jelly beans, you know, fall out of the couch to find a better way to harness your superpowers and encapsulate that in the business. But then you leverage the value of the personality, the business owner, because I believe we live in the era of the trillion dollar brand now. Like Elon Musk will be our first trillion dollar individual brand. You know, Bezos and Gates and Oprah are in, they're in the, in the billions, but great leaders are multipliers for the business. And again, if they step into an identity that they feel comfortable with that pressure, that sense of, I'm not sure if I can do this does go away. And with that category of one, I, I, I love that kind of term. How do you, is it something that just kind of comes to you when you're unpacking things for people? Because I know that there's a lot of people that especially listen to this podcast that might be in similar industries like business coaching. Like we work with a lot of people that are like almost like influencer and Instagram coaches and things like that as well, where their market is super muddy, it's super red ocean, and there's not a lot of differentiation between a lot of people. What's sort of like, and obviously I know like some of this might be uh, more IP related to actually how you do these things, but what are some of the things people could do to start thinking about how to separate themselves out of those, those red oceans and into that category of one? Sure. It all comes down to you and I could be selling the exact same product. We could use like a multi-level marketing thing, for example. That to me is the ultimate in nasty, moldy bread toast. You know, it's like, it's boring. There's no differentiation, no distinction, but... If I've helped someone and they've had a transformational experience, that transformation is uniquely yours and mine. We sell the transformation. We sell the story. The product is irrelevant. Okay, that's number one. Number two, it comes down to our delivery. So I've got a unique way of expressing myself and you, and our interaction is a little symphony uh, it could be just a little melody, but ideally it's a symphony. And if I can describe the before, during, and after, what the day in the life of us together is like, that is unique as well. And then finally, I've learned that without exception, the process we go through will be unique. In other words, what are the questions that I ask you? How do I make you feel? And at the end of the day, we are all state-based beings. We pay money for experiences that change our state. I don't care if you're buying drugs, food, alcohol, internet stuff, movies. We want a state change. And so if I can become an expert at describing 
the experience to you. That transformation, that's what makes you want to buy. And theatrics helps. Life is, in fact, a movie. And it's starring some characters. And those characters mean something. And those characters make you feel a certain way. We all represent little archetypes. And pulling yourself away from this and depersonalizing it so you can see the patterns is where those secrets lie. Now, what I just described to you is incredibly complex psychology, but you get used to thinking this way once you start seeing the patterns. And, and that really is the key to uh, building these Category 1 brands and building a unique, finding those stories. And I've just found that over time, I can get through anyone in about two days. And then I usually now, we usually do a third day where it's all about videos and content and interviews. Because once you get used to stepping into this new identity, you know, literally we can invent, a, offer the stories and then do an interview, which doesn't require that you have to become something different. You have to, don't have to memorize. You don't have to perform for anyone. You're just sitting on the opposite side, just like we're doing right now, having a conversation. And people love to talk about experiences and transformations and the things they love and the people they love. And as long as it stays on track and it leads to the promised land, which is an investment in a product or service, we all get to the right destination. I love that. I think that's, that's uh, amazing insight and input for people. And as you say, if you can start to... Uh... You need to start thinking about things in, in that way. And even for people listening, for their clients, for themselves, I think unpacking that and uh, going through some of those points there is, would be super, super important. So that's amazing. Now, um, Mike, I could probably sit here and chat to you for hours, but I want to make sure we stay on time here for, for all of our listeners. Um, and I always like to end the podcast with one question the same every time, which is, is there a question that I didn't ask you that I should have? Yeah, it's a, first of all, it's a really... Awesome question. And first of all, you're a great interviewer and you really set things up really well. And I feel served in the sense that I feel like I was able to give you and your audience the best information based upon me researching you and your podcast, right? So I think we, we're already at a win stage here. And all right, I'm, I'm, I don't know how to reverse this and say, here's the question you want to ask, but it's like, what's the most important skill you can develop to become incredibly successful? And I can give you two. Oh, please. All right. So the first one, I did an interview recently with Roger Love. If you haven't heard of him, he is a voice singing acting coach. Well, he doesn't teach acting, but he teaches voice. And he is known as being the number one uh, voice acting coach in the world. And he trained Bradley Cooper to sing for A Star is Born, for example. He worked with Reese Witherspoon, who had never sung before for the Johnny Cash movie. And he's incredibly skilled and talented. And I did a selfish podcast with him, which, as I said, I want to learn what you know, and I'd like you to coach me on my voice. And he gave me a ton of great feedback. And what I realized in speaking with him that I've noticed, but I hadn't paid enough attention to is I've always paid attention to like how you speak, the words you use, the structure and all that, but not the tonality, not like the lows, the highs and shifting. But if you want to become mesmerizing, which you do, is beyond storytelling, beyond learning some improv or taking some acting, learn how to use your voice. Because if you learn cadence and melody along with great storytelling, there is no end to what you can do. And out there, someone's like, how, what's the fastest way to make a million dollars? I'll tell you what it is. It's one client selling them for a million dollar product. And if you're great at storytelling and presenting transformation people will pay you for being they will pay more for your brand so if you're a bmw or your porsche that is a perception all that we have is the agreement of value and your perceived value increases when you work on your voice your cadence your melody and and how you speak 
And so that would be uh, one key thing. And then I'll give you one more, which is I think a mistake that I see people make is like, I can tell you're really creative. For example, you've got a great creative mind. You ask a lot of great questions and we all have a certain amount of creative mindedness. And the thing that bites us in the ass, especially as entrepreneurs, is our follow-up. You know, it's following through and following up is a So what's important is that when you are capturing the moment with someone, I believe in using, there's a product I recommend, it's otter.ai, it does real-time transcripts. So I transcribe every single interview, every single conversation I ever do with clients. Next, I record the videos and I make them available in real time. So like when I'm doing Zoom meetings, I always ask the person, hey, is it okay if I send you a transcript of our conversation? No one's going to say no to that, right? And then, is it okay if I send you a video of it right now? And they're like, that would be awesome. So I always record to a unlisted YouTube channel, not just the Zoom, because like Zoom, for example, you got to wait for it to process and download. It's a pain in their b This way I give them those two links right away. And I also have a team member who's incredible at integrating and synthesizing and capturing the stuff in real time and packaging it. The point is, as soon as I'm done working with someone, they already get the final product. They don't have to wait for a report and follow up and follow through. So what's the point of me saying this? I think as entrepreneurs, we have to really accommodate our superpowers, but also our weakest sides, which is usually follow up and follow through. And the sooner you do that in real time, you capture that moment, the faster you're going to be able to operate with a lot less stress. And that is as simple as that is, that has had a profound effect on my earning ability, my peace of mind and simplicity, which to me, I am a quality, not a quantity guy. I'm all about quality of life. You know, I almost died of cancer 10 years ago. You know, like I'm all, I, every day is a bonus. Okay. I just want the highest quality possible and getting rid of the noise and the follow-up and the follow-through and the, oh, I forgot to do that is where I experience a lot of pain. So I think inside of that, it's like really getting to know yourself and knowing what you're weak at and addressing it and being honest makes a huge, huge difference. So I don't know if I answered the question, but those are the two things that pop up as you, when you ask that, I just didn't know how to articulate it at first. I think that's, that's perfect and, and great answers there and great takeaways for everyone. And if people have been listening to this and they go, I just want to know more about Mike, what he's up to and what he's doing. Where's the best place for people to connect with you online? Okay. So my personal website is my name, but the shortcut is paidforlife.com. And there you can learn more about me. And there, I've got two podcasts. One's called Capability Amplifier with the amazing Dan Sullivan from Strategic Coach. A second one, I just finished recording a couple episodes with my good friend, Gay Hendricks, who wrote The Big Leap. And every entrepreneur should read that book. It's about getting past your glass ceiling, your upper limits challenges, which we all have, you know, and there's always a new one where whenever you overcome that. And then my business website is superpower.one. So make your choice, but at a minimum, I'd say subscribe to one of my podcasts because just like this, there's always incredible nuggets. And Dan's 75, 76 years old, gay is 75. I love old, wise men. And I don't think of them as old, but I mean, they're older. And um, the more time you spend with the sages and the magicians and the masters, the smarter you become. And there's nothing better than walking into a room and feeling three to 10 times smarter than you are because of the people you spend your time with. And that's the beauty of a great podcast. I love that. And um, I'm definitely going to check those out because two amazing people there that um, I've learned a lot of uh, things from as well. So I'm going to make sure I subscribe also. So guys, we'll have those linked in the show notes above or below wherever you're watching or listening to this. So you can click through and check all those out. And if you know anyone that maybe has been holding back on their superpower or is not 100% sure on what it is, please make sure that you share this podcast with them so that they can find out a little bit more about how to tap into that. And then if they need more help, they can always reach out to Mike. Uh, for help also. Mike, again, thank you so much for spending time with us today. Really appreciate you making the time. Absolutely. Great interview. Fabulous job. I'm looking forward to uh, getting to spend some more time with you. You just got to get on over here to beautiful San Diego. <laughs> thank you so much. Appreciate it.